This is one of my favourite views in London. Looking back from the high ground near Tesco's here at the top of Gainsborough Road, and there you can see the towers of the City of London blooming in the distance, the ever-changing skyline. I thought there was people eating McDonald's then, but I noticed it's just a start. Um, it would be so exciting to see people eating at McDonald's. I don't go to McDonald's, but suddenly it was like, there's people at McDonald's, McDonald's is open. <laughs> it's open for a drive through look. drive through lane only. Actually, what I was going to say is, we're off to the Fairlock Fair. The Fairlock Fair, I mean, we're about 200 years too late and a month too early. Fairlock Fair, I think, was the last Friday in July, and today it's the 18th of June 2020, and not 1820, or really 1760 would have been the time to go to the Fairlock Fair, I think. And there's so many interesting things to see along the way. Uh, this uh, promises to be another hauntological expedition. That word's now in my vocabulary, and I'm going to use it until I've completely worn it out. Also, the first day out for a new pair of walking shoots. These are from Merrill, what brand? Uh, the Merrill Moab 2 Vent, I think they're called. I think that the Fairlock Fair was a really massive kind of day in the London calendar. I think it's like a bit like a kind of Notting Hill Carnival of the, of the past. And it kind of, it's very resonant in this area, I passed uh, Fairlop Road on the way here. So the word Fairlop is used a lot, even though the place today is not, you know, enormously significant, you might say, or well, you might argue against that as you live in Fairlop. I mean, it's a beautiful day now. I do think I'd be going out today because it was a uh, really horribly wet and rainy earlier on but look at this this is fantastic i'm leaving a, a bit later than i would like for this walk it's about i don't know about six miles there if i take the most direct route which i never do anyway so it's about uh, half four now so i just have to walk there and then walk the most direct route back hey it's all an adventure right So I'm just going to yomp it down the Eastern Avenue here, down to Redbridge Station, serenaded by the hum of the M11 Link Road running through its cutting there. I've always found this a very intriguing building here in Cambridge Road, Wanstead. I mean, architecturally, what, what is going on there? Is it sort of arts and craftsy? Is it a little bit art deco modernist? I'm not entirely sure. Leighton Stone's High Stone, commemorated here, the street name in Wanstead. Somebody once told me that Wanstead is uh, the care home capital of London, or like the retirement home of London, if you like. A lot of the, so we've got some quite grand old houses here, and a lot of them have been converted into uh, some form of old people's homes, either they're just sort of residential places or they're actual care homes. You know, I wonder here, Addison Road, where this is named after. William Addison, who wrote one of the famous books about Epping Forest. It's a possibility. Wants the tube station. The tube stations on this uh, Central Line loop are a real marvel. There's some majestic stations along this part of the Central Line. This is um, a great little plaque here on the side of the George Pub in Wanstead, and it commemorates the day that some, I think some builders were doing some work on the pub and they nicked cherry pie. There was uh, someone was carrying by beneath them, they just leant down off the scaffold and nicked it and they were given a fine and then when they came back to work on the pub they put that plaque up there, 1752. I love this view down across the Roding Valley. That's where we're going. I'll be honest with you, I'm really enjoying doing these local walks during the lockdown. I mean, even here, I'm going a bit further afield, but it's still like a kind of six miles there, six miles back. It's so loud here, isn't it? But um, I'm still not using any uh, public transport. 
Public transport really still is only for essential journeys, even though I suppose you, you can use it, but I'm going to hold out for as long as possible. I don't regard this as being an essential journey coming back from my walk. So, what are we now? Week 12, week 13 of the lockdown. The football's back, it started last night. I think some pubs are going to be opening on the 4th of July. This grand old house here in Wanstead Raiden Hall always looks like it's got some stories to tell, but I've never really penetrated its psyche before. This is interesting, you've got a, a set of steps here leading down to this very kind of overgrown patch of land. So quite what they're giving access to, I'm not entirely sure. There's some um, kind of metallic boxes down here, so there's obviously some sort of infrastructure here. Anyone know? Pop a comment below, I'll be very grateful. Here it is. Glorious river roading. Man, it's so tempting just to strike off up the roading. But I've done that so many times now. I can stick true to my course. So now I enter the quite labyrinthine subway that takes you beneath the Redbridge roundabout. And with my sense of direction, the chances of me coming out where I want to are, I'd say, quite slim. So we want to go over there, where you can see that tower block behind the flyover. And to do that, we've got to go all the way down here and around. Redbridge Station, designed by the great tube architect Charles Holden, who did some of our most famous and most beautiful tube stations, most notably I would say Gans Hill. This beef eater here on the Redbridge roundabout, I wonder what it was called before, it's obviously had a, had a previous life. Maybe in a more illustrious past than being a beef eater. I've never actually been in here, I keep meaning to come here, but it's never the right time. I love this little parade of shops here, just off of uh, Redbridge Lane East. Aren't they wonderful? There is an intense amount of traffic here on Redbridge Lane East. That's the way we're going to go. We're going to go straight up here towards Fullwell Cross and then on to Fairlock. In, um, in last week's video, which is not very far away from here in Snaresbrook, I mentioned the term hauntology in relation to some of the modernist architecture, how it might um, kind of apply to this idea of the hauntology being used in the sense of uh, a nostalgia for lost futures. That's an interesting idea, isn't it? A nostalgia for lost futures. We're going to see a lot more of that kind of architecture today, I think. Well, we already have, haven't we? And I was reading this week that apparently the, uh, the word nostalgia was only coined in the 17th century to describe the malady of being, feeling uh, kind of pain of being away from home, distant from home been formed from two Greek words, nostos meaning home and algos meaning pain, the pain from being distant from your homeland, interesting. And then when it was used in the English language more in the 18th century, it was used by a ship's doctor to talk about a kind of what they saw as a disease experienced by the sailors who were far from home for too long. It's interesting isn't it how these ideas go around. So it's actually used in a geographical sense nostalgia really connected to place and I know some of the people watching these videos get a sense of nostalgia when they watch them don't they so it's it's interesting ontology and nostalgia it all links to this experience of place and we can uh, kind of release these feelings or maybe we can exercise some of them just the simple act of going for a walk going uphill here along Redbridge Lane East 
I'm just trying to imagine what it would have been like to climb this hill when this was a rural landscape. Not much more than a hundred years ago, I would have thought. When I walk around East London, I realise just how many fish and chip shops I've been to over the years. The lobster pie over there, been there, had a bag of chips. About mid-morning, I think it was, about 11 o'clock in the morning. I love this street sign here, you can see, look, where it says Redbridge Lane, and they've tagged on East on the end of it. Quite an impressive view looking back along this A road here. I think here we're looking towards uh, Epping Forest in the far distance. And this is the parliamentary constituency of Ilford North. Some fine, uh, what I assume, a post war council housing here. This fine building here is the telephone exchange. What grand building that is. I don't know why, these kind of like 50s telecommunications buildings always made me think of Doctor Who. It's where UNIT would hide out. Let's go for a visit to a Clay Hall Park, shall we? This is one of these really lovely little kind of community parks that you probably wouldn't know about if you didn't live in the area. It's really delightful. Apparently the name Clay Hall is taken from uh, an old 13th century manor. So the current do's and don'ts of what you can do in a park. You can exercise and spend as long as you want here. You can play ball games, you can have a picnic, sunbathe and all that business, meet other people. But you can't go in the playground and you can't participate in team games. So this is interesting, this plaque embedded in a stone here. It says the names in this park with, sorry, the trees in this park with names on the plaques were planted under the auspices of the Men of the Trees, Ilford Group, on Armistice Day 1937 to commemorate the coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. The Men of the Trees, that's what a group that was. And you've got this kind of mock Neolithic monument here, you've got the stones to create a stone circle around what I guess is a kind of model of a tumulus. I don't think it's a real tumulus. Unless I'm mistaken. I mean, it would be great if this was a real burial mound. Obviously, I don't think for one minute this is a real burial mound. I think this is a bit of public art. However, I did go to a burial mound in, on the Pinehurst Estate, um, just near Ware. Uh, and it was, a, it was a bigger mound than this. It was just a big mound in the middle of a housing estate. And it's a Bronze Age burial mound. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing to mark that fact, nothing to advertise it. So you would never know. You just think it was a mound of earth that was put there during the building of the housing estate. But beneath it is slumbering some sort of high status individuals from the Bronze Age, probably through to the Roman period. There's a lovely little sunken garden here. When I've uh, written about this area in the past on my blog through Newbury Park, Hainault, Gantz Hill, Claybury, it's kind of classic kind of homes for heroes post-war developments, I see them as places of great kind of optimism. And I think um, that optimism, that kind of civic pride that they had when they were rebuilding the country after the Second World War, you can still see it. It's still here, you can still feel it in the landscape. And certainly we've still got the wonderful architecture it left behind and we're about to go and look at one of the greatest pieces of East London architecture. I hope, if I've got the route correct. Should be just up the road here. Can't, can't believe I didn't say this at the beginning of the video. The channel has now hit 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 subscribers. 
I want to say a huge thank you to everyone that's supported the channel, subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you enjoy the videos, then please click on that subscription button. It doesn't cost you anything, it just gives, sends you a notification. If you click the bell as well, it gives you a notification of when I upload a video. And it tells the uh, all powerful YouTube algorithm that the channel's doing quite well and it will recommend it to more people. And I've also been asked to give a shout out to Mimi Cheng in Singapore. Mimi Cheng in Singapore. Hey dear Mimi, hope you're doing well. This is one of those great little parades of local shops that I'm very fond of. So this looks like it might have been a pub once upon a time. And now it's a co-op. Apparently the co-op are devils for turning pubs into supermarkets. Previously the Dr Johnson. I'm sure some of you used to drink in here. What was it like? Was it all right? See any good bands in here? Another fine looking council estate here. It's called Gaysham Hall. Side Cemetery. Of course, Barkingside is famous for the uh, the children's home, the Dr. Bernardo's Children's Home and Now Children's Charity. It was founded here in 1866, and the Dr. Bernardo's Charity is still based here in Barkingside in East London. Parking side was also notable as being one of the centres of London's Jewish population. Look at this really delightful parish hall here. I don't know what architectural style you call that, but uh, it must be from the, the 20s or 30s. It's got some sort of arts and crafts thing going on there, hasn't it? This is another really sort of delightful little building here, Trinity Hall. That's Ilford County High School over there. Any of my viewers go to that school? What was it like? I think now it's a, it's a grammar school, isn't it? It's a very good school now. And here we have our second Fairlop Road of the day. We're going to the Fairlop Fair. This beauty here, this beautiful old cinema. Now it's a bingo hall. I think it was an Odeon cinema at one point. I know I've received comments about this in the past and I can't seem to find them, so I'm sure some of you will have memories of coming here to the cinema. It's a really beautiful building, isn't it? But here's the real gem. The glorious, majestic, transcendental Fulwell Cross Library. It's, it's described on Wikipedia as being a civic Alhambra. It was designed by the uh, notable architect Frederick Gibbard, who was later the chief planner of uh, Harlow Newtown. He also designed Heathrow Airport and Liverpool Metropolitan Cathedral. There's definitely something distinctly UFO-like about it, isn't there? You see, this is the ramp leading up to the entrance of the UFO, transporting you to a far-off cosmos. It was also designed alongside this beautiful leisure centre here, which was originally going to have an Olympic-sized pool in it. So just down this road here, is our destination, Fairlock Waters. And here we have King Solomon's High School, apparently a very fine school. I just want to say that the weather forecasts lately have been abysmal. According to the weather forecast, right up until midday today, it was supposed to be heavy rain and lightning at this time. 
So when I looked at the weather forecast yesterday, I didn't think I'd be going out walking today, so I didn't really do much preparation. A little bit, but not too much. So this is a wonderful surprise. I wonder why they suddenly weather forecasts are just so inaccurate. Fairlock tube station here on the on the loop of the central line, the central line loop. I love this road here. This is the point at which you feel like you're breaking out to the countryside. Hainault Forest is at the uh, at the end of this road. If you go over to the right there, there is actually farmland. Well, there's a farm here as well. Fresh fruit and vegetables daily from the farm shop. So here it is. The entrance to the wonderful Fairlock Waters. I haven't been here for years. About four years since I've been here. So Fairlock takes its name from the famous Fairlock Oak an enormous old oak tree which stood in Hainault Forest when Hainault Forest covered all of this land here. It's said that the tree was 66 feet in circumference. That's huge, 66 feet in circumference. It was a legendary tree. The tree was believed to be over 900 years old in its prime. By the 18th century, it's written that the tree was declining in health and the trunk had become hollow. Some of the wood from the Fairlop Oak is said to have been used in the pulpit at Wanstead Church and also in St Pancras Church as well. There's some derelict buildings through here. I wonder if these are anything to do with the, uh, the RAF fighter station that was here in the Second World War. It could be associated with the farm buildings that were here. Looks like there's been a recent fire. You can still smell it actually. And look, if we go through here, there's another. There's another old building here. Now this looks like it could have some sort of uh, wartime heritage, doesn't it? This is not really looking like a farm building. So in the uh, 17th century, a city trader and merchant, I think he uh, dealt with water. I think he delivered fresh drinking water to people. He um, used to bring his employees out into the forest for an annual fair, an annual day out. And they would use the Fairlop Oak as the rendezvous point. Over time, this became a really sort of popular event, a big day out for Londoners. And apparently at one point in the 18th century, as many as 100,000 people would make the journey out through the forest to meet at the Fairlop Oak and have an enormous fair. Now, Fairlop Waters is a really lovely country park. There's a golf course here, there's sort of climbing boulders. It's a nature reserve. There's all sorts of things going over here at Fairlop Waters. There's a sports centre as well. It's a great place. An airfield was established here during the First World War. It was used quite extensively during the Second World War. Then after the war in 1947, they were going to turn it into the major global intercontinental airport. They abandoned those plans and decided to use RAF base at the Heath Row on Hounslow Heath. And the rest, as I say, is history. But this could have been London's major hub airport. Thank you so much for joining me on this glorious walk out east to the Fairlop Fair. Even though it's not there anymore, it lives on in our imagination. Thank you also to the, the brilliant fellow travellers and radical ramblers on Patreon. Your support is hugely appreciated. And thanks to everyone for helping us get to 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 subscribers. I'm 
I was, that was a really good evening. I think it was on Tuesday when that happened and that was really made my day. So thank you again. And as ever, I look forward to seeing you all on the next walk, wherever that may be. Most direct route down the Eastern Avenue. Come on. <laughs>